Highland fling we see in the new year in Scotland on the Hinds. I'm off to Sweden to look at a bird watching resort that also does hunting. Welcome to Field Sports Britain. Life is full of firsts. This trip to the west coast of Scotland offers some firsts for guests of Blaser Sporting. Sporting Shooters' Rebecca Green has never stalked a red deer. And Will Hetherington, editor of Shooting Gazette, has never shot a deer. Too much time shooting led vertically, not horizontally. We are in the capable hands of Neil and Stevie from West Highland Hunting on the Ardner Merkin Peninsula. Favourite part of my job? Seeing good healthy deer on the hill. It's the middle of the hind carl and there will be plenty of opportunities for the guys to get onto deer, but first they need to show their metal on the frosty target. <laughs> Accompanying Rebecca and Will are Robert Zeitz and Alexandra Bauer from Blaser. It's a Blaser busman's holiday as they'll be pulling the trigger on the R8s too. Right ladies, so the plan today, but obviously the change in the weather from yesterday, the wind's gone to the north and it's quite a bit colder. And what you'll find today is the deer will then go back into shelter slopes and from spying here we can see these hinds tucked in on the edge there and then above the sea. So what we're going to do is drop down onto the shore and then we're going to make our way around onto this first top. There's a hind and calf there on their own. We saw her last night so we'll probably try and take her today. And then depending on how they move we should be able to get on and get a second stop. This place has plenty of history and Neil not only offers fascinating deer facts but historical ones too. It's really quite interesting this spot. They reckon this is where Christianity landed on the Scottish mainland. So that green lump with the trees there, that was meant to be a chamber cairn and that's where St Columba established his ministry on the mainland. And these standing stones with the graveyard there, they certainly date way back. So this has always been quite significant. It's known as Camus na Gael, the Bay of the Pledges. You can really immerse yourself in the history if you want to. Mingary Castle has recently been rescued from falling into the sea. It is refurbished and is now open for guests. If you want to add to those memorable firsts we spoke of, then this could be the icing on the cake. We now work uh, basically as a hotel, although that is not a hotel. We always like to say that it's Mingary Castle uh, in its full splendour. Um, so we have uh, five bedrooms. Uh, they're all named by the clans that once lived in the castle. So we have McKeon, uh, which is a super king and sweet. Uh, we have McDougal and we have a family friendly suite, which is called McCain on the top floor and where you can see the Isle of Mar just in front of you. And as well, we have like a honeymoon suite, which is in our courtyard, which is called McDonald. It's not long before Neil has Rebecca and Alexandra on a hind and a calf. He wants Rebecca to shoot the hind first and Alexandra to take the youngster as soon after as possible. You can see her leg there now, look. The hind's well shot, the calf needs shot. You see the calf coming toward you? Can you see its shoulder? It's, it's gone around the top of the hill, just keep your heads down, it'll come back round to its mother. There's it coming now, you see it? On the top of the hill. Coming now. When it stops, shoot it through the shoulder. OK, shoot it. Good girl. Well done. The youngster appears and, believe us, there's a big lump of Scotland behind it that's unseen from this low angle. Now, in a woodland setting, you'll always be told, shoot the calf first and then the female, because the chances are if you shoot the calf and she runs off, it's less of a disaster than you shooting the female and the calf getting away. But in this scenario here, the calf wasn't going to go anywhere without its mother anyway. So when mummy went down, you just lay quietly, knowing full well it'll come back. Hmm. Yeah. It's the first right there, actually. Is it? Yeah. Wow. So what do you think? 
dead easy. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's only dead easy with you. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a different situation when you've got all the, you know, the deer I've shot in the past, they've just been completely unobstructed view. Uh -huh. get, so yeah, I felt a bit nervous about not quite being able to see every part of the deer before I shot. Uh -huh. Just that long grass you weren't going to see your legs. No. So what we'll do is we'll just lay quietly for a minute because they haven't seen a thing and what we're going to do is we're not going to walk forward, we're going to creep back, go up that gully, stalk up to them, garlic and pull them out of sight and carry on. So if you want to make sure your rifles are safe. Neil plays the hills like a snooker table. A shot here moves the deer into the next valley. We can then reposition for the next pot shot. Here's the farthest to the right. Okay. Good girl. Rebecca takes a calf at an acute angle. It's good work by the magazine editor and the estate rifle, a Blazer R8 yep. in 300 Win Mag. If you shoot every red deer the rest of your life like you shot that one, you'll never have any problems. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Absolutely perfect. Oh, cool. Yeah. Well, I think for us, rugged reliability and consistent accuracy is what we're looking for. I mean, it's nice that you can take it down if you're travelling abroad, but I mean, Stevie and I and the rest of the team, they're using blazers, are using these rifles day in, day out as a working tool for anything from managing foxes to managing deer. And you just want to be able to take consistently a humane, clean shot. The next day, Will is up. This time, we know the hind we are after. What we're going to do here, if you look just over to the, the Mackey here, Robert, you can see a group of hinds making their way off along the slope. Yeah. And above us on the right, below the top, there's an old hind we've been watching for a couple of weeks. So we're going to drop back down the wind here, come around the back of the feature, and uh, take her, and then hopefully take the follower as well. Okay. That's a good job. Yep. Yeah. Okay, I'll give it a go. However, Neil spots a hind that needs to go. There's a strange lump on the side of her face. Her condition is poor and so is her calves. Will shoots the hind and Robert shoots the youngster plus another small hind. When we get to her, it's a miracle she's lasted as long as she has. And the way she was moving was wrong. And then we look at it, see this back leg is completely wasted. And then this knee joint here is broken. So I mean, look at that, you see the damage to the leg there. The whole leg is wasted away, and then if you look here you can see that's been broken. And then if you look at her bottom jaw, there's signs of, a, of fusing and healing to the bone in her head. It's more than likely here with where we are in the glen that this lady has been hit by a car. She's been smashed up quite badly by it, but she's survived it. And it's remarkable that she's survived, and that we haven't seen her until now. So we'll, we'll garlic this one out and have a look, but there's a good chance that this one isn't fit to eat. The other hind is good for the larder. He lays her out in a way that avoids the birds, the eagles, spoiling the carcass and for ease of preparation. If you leave him laid out like that, he's nice and easy for the eagle to get into. So what you want to do is lay him on his front, okay, open the back legs up like that. And then another thing that it does, it makes it nice and easy for setting the carcass. Put his neck out straight, uh -huh. or her neck out straight, cross it like that. Right. Okay. Why you cross the legs over? What you'll find is when you lay it on, the back and, uh, lay it on its back in the larder to clean it out, it'll be absolutely straight okay. and it'll clean out quite easily. And the eagles aren't strong enough to flip it over? Well, I mean, if you leave it long enough, they'll, they'll go in through the backside, but it just makes it a bit easier. And also when the carcass is left like that, it's draining too. You know? yeah. At the end of the trip, both Will and Rebecca take away memories of a successful stalk with a sprinkle of local history, a dollop of deer biology, all served up in an extraordinary place. If you want to add some more firsts to your life, and if you haven't become addicted already, go to westhighland-hunting.co.uk and to blaza-sporting.com. <laughs> A very special part of the country. Now, for the last time in 2016, it's David on the Field Sports Channel News Stump.
This is Field Sports Channel News. It was another big boxing day for hunting in the UK. More than a quarter of a million people turned out at hunt meets across the country in an extraordinary show of support. 12 seasons after Tony Blair thinks he banned it. This film shows the Tiverton Foxhounds meeting in the middle of the Devon market town. There were antis, but it didn't go all their own way. Here are some out sabbing the Surrey Union and getting a bit stuck. Thanks to James Beagley and the Countryside Capers Facebook page for this one. Calling our North American viewers. One of our clients is running a quick survey about your hunting habits. You can win stuff by clicking on the link on the screen and filling it out. Easy. There's a new world record black buck. Pakistani hunter Hasham Osama Khan is pictured with the animal he took with a Winchester Model 70 in 7mm at 250 yards. He shot it in the Punjab. Staying in Pakistan and the Markor season has opened. The story of the Markor is a story of how big game hunting has brought a highly endangered species back from the brink. Top American hunter Rex Baker from Georgia opened the season with his trophy in Gilgit reported on Pakistani TV. Bad news for salmon and sea trout anglers in Wales. Pollution from a farm has killed all the fish in more than five miles of the River Tyvee. Anglers have counted more than a thousand dead fish and expect the figure to rise to several times that amount. It'll take a decade to recover from. This footage by Stephen Jones was taken next to the famous angler Mock Morgan's memorial on the riverbank. And finally, another poisoning, but more unusual. The West Wyoming Borough Police Department has found what killed a mother bear and her three cubs in a car park. They'd just eaten English yew from a suburban hedge. Just a few berries can cause a heart attack in animals, including humans. You are now up to date with Field Sports Channel News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts. Thank you, David. I'm off to Sweden now to look at some really big game. You can come here as a bird watcher or a shooter. Out on a Swedish peninsula overlooking the Baltic Sea is a nature and hunting resort. At Eriksberg, they look after both, and it is luxury. There are hotels and holiday lets, bars and restaurants, and an extraordinary breeding population of some of Europe's most spectacular animals, all in a two and a half thousand acre fenced hunting estate. Fenced, yes, but you see no fences when you are in the hands of the man who looks after the animals here and whether you are on a wildlife watching trip or a driven hunting day. It has been a nature reserve for uh, 30 years and uh, it becomes to have uh, been fenced uh, about uh, 1942 and forwards. And what sort of animals have you got here? We have six big species of game and that's the fallow deer and the red deer. In summer stock we have about uh, 700 of the fallow deer and the red deer we have about a half, 300, 350 of them. And we also have the mufflon, the wild boar and we also have the David deers and they, we just had them for a few months inside the fence and uh, there are about 20 of them and uh, we got them from uh, UK and uh, we have them in quarantine for 18 months before we can put them in here and then we have the, the giants, the European bisons. We have the biggest herd here in all Europe and there are 60 of them and uh, we are in a program, it's a pedigree group from Poland who helps us to have the best genetics we can have and uh, this is the biggest uh, land-living uh, mammal we have in Europe and they are really amazing. When you see them you can, you can think that you are about 2000 years back in the times. The founder, Mr. Bank Berg, he wanted to, to build up uh, a place with animals, wild animals and then uh, get uh, good genetics and save them for the future. That's the main goal. And then we can also hunt them, we can have tourists to look at them and we have a very good meat for our restaurants. We say that we have the total experience here. We have a very nice landscape. We have nice animals and we have the hotel, we have the restaurants. We have lots of activities. So it's, we have the total experience. That's the best of our experience. If you have a, a nature conservation area like this with wild animals, you have to hunt. But that's a way to manage it. We don't have any big predators, so it has been full. So we have to hunt them, of course. And we all, always uh, do a plan every year and we shoot the right animals for every year. Well, it's the end of a very happy day for me here at Eriksberg, where they do wildlife 
and hunting really well. And look, I got one. Thanks very much to Swedish cartridge company Norma, Swedish hunting clothing company Chevalier and to Eriksberg for inviting me here. Whether you are a party of guns or even a lone birder, have a look at eriksberg.nu. Those European bison were absolutely extraordinary. How do you tell the difference between a buffalo and a bison? You can't wash your hands in a buffalo. Now from the small world of my sense of humour to the wide world of hunting and shooting on YouTube, it is Hunting YouTube. This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting and shooting videos that YouTube has to offer. Lots of Boxing Day Hunt Meat videos, as you would imagine at this time of year. I like this one from the Morpeth, which shows the action from a day's hunting in this Christmas's bright weather. Back Cam is back with some new films after a two year break. No longer the camera on the back of the Falcon, but that was pretty good. Staying on birds, moving to guns, Woodcock Hunting Ireland 2016 takes you through Wayne Carberry's season so far with clips of him shooting over Springer Spaniels. There will be lots of best moments films at the end of the year and he was one of the first. It is a driven hunt compilation by Potrick 81 Hunting. Another one and another wild boar film is Aurora Yachtrizer's film of hunting in Poland. Which of the two is best? You decide. I reported on the start of the Arkansas Wildlife series and it is good to see it getting into its stride. Arkansas Wildlife TV episode 12 has a festive Christmas Day duck hunt plus other sporting action from the natural state. Here's an episode one from an old hand. Simon's vlog has the incredible Simon Whitehead out with Tawny and some of his Pigfield ferrets. And finally, corporate films. Both Zara Rifles and Mauser Rifles are out with new films, but only on Facebook. Everyone is heading hardcore and extreme, and top of this list is US hunting clothing company Kuyu, which is out in the Mackenzie Mountains of the Yukon after moose with traditional wooden longbows. That's it for this week. Links are in the description. If you have a YouTube film you would like to start pop into the weekly top eight, send it in via YouTube or email me the link, charlie at fieldsportchannel.tv. Well, that's it for this week. And for this year, if you haven't done so already, please pop over to our website, fieldsportschannel.tv, currently loading about 10 times faster than it was last week, thanks to viewer Owen Morrill from Colorado. Thank you, Owen, for fixing it. You can, while you're there, pop your email address into our constant contact box and we'll send you our newsletter every week about Field Sports Britain. You can subscribe to us on YouTube, you can like us on Facebook, and you can follow Field Sports Channel on Twitter. And this has been Field Sports Britain. Good hunting. Good shooting, good fishing, and Happy New Year. <laughs>